I already promised that we were going to look at lambda expressions. And lambda expressions, they can be quite difficult. So please stay with me while I try to explain this to you the best I can. So we have a functional interface here and we need one for a lambda expression. But instead I'm going to make a slightly easier one because this one might get a bit vague conceptually if I'm going to use the lambda to create a predator. So I'm going to create an interface called calculator. Like this. And it's going to consist of one abstract method, namely calc, like this. And it's going to take two variables, double A and double B. And that's it. So we are going to go to our main and I'm going to get rid of all of this. And actually I'm going to get rid of all of this too. Clean up a bit. And then in here, I'm going to say um, calculator C equals new calculator. And then what it does right now, it is going to create an anonymous implementation of um, our calculator. Because here I am actually creating a new calculator. But as I already said, you cannot instantiate interface. So this is an anonymous implementation of our calculator interface. It doesn't have a name. There is no class that implements the calculator. No, it's anonymous. It doesn't have a name. So in here, I could simply say return uh, the result of A plus B. So it's a very simple calculator. And then in here, I can actually call this. I can say uh, calculate 8 and 9. And it is returning a double. So let me just print the result like this. And run it. And there you go. It has calculated 8 plus 9. But this is a lot of typing for something relatively simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a lambda expression. And this looks a lot easier. Let's have a look. I'm going to call this calculate C1. And then I'm going to specify the input parameters like this. And I'm going to make a special arrow and I'm going to read it as becomes. So A comma B becomes A plus B. And this is actually exactly the same as up there, but then in way less characters. Because right now, if I say c.calc and again say 8,9, and I'm actually going to say c1 clearly, because I want to use the other one. And I'm going to run this. It's just going to print 17.0 twice. Let's have a look. There we go. Twice. So let's examine this a bit, because this can be a bit weird, right? So it, there's only one abstract method. I know that for sure, because I'm using a functional interface. So this trick. Re writing this as this, as a lambda expression, so this is called a lambda expression, that will only work when it's an abstract, um, no, when it's a functional interface with only one abstract method. So that's what you can see here, it has only one. If it has more than that, you unfortunately you have to do it like this if you want to make an anonymous implementation. So it knows what method I'm overriding, so let's only look at this, because it already knows the interface, that's this one. And then here, we are talking about the input parameters. Since there's only one method, it knows what input parameters I'm talking about, the ones from the abstract method. So that's a comma b. I could actually also have called this x comma y, and then it would still have known it over here. If you only want to do one line of code, you can write it like this and you can leave out the return. So you can say x comma y, special arrow that we'll read as becomes, x plus y. So this is the way of writing a lambda expression that takes two parameters. Let's change our calc a bit to returning nothing, which would be weird for a calc method, but possible. We are going to go back to our main method here, and this is just going to be a void, and this is not going to be a return, but a system print out like this. I can actually also do that in here, but then I would have to surround it with a system out like this. And since it's not returning anything, it knows I'm not returning anything. And look, I'm not returning anything. I'm just printing something. That's all. So let's make even another change. And that is that I'm going to remove the input parameters, which is weird. I know. Because what is it going to call if I'm removing the input parameters? But Let's just pretend that makes sense right now. So removing them here and just adding 8 plus 9 there. 
in here I'm removing them too but I will have to leave these round parentheses and I'm going to write this as 8 plus 9 there we go and then here you would just call it like this and clearly you cannot print it anymore because it returns a void but it is printing it inside the calc method so you can just do it like this there's actually only one situation in which you'll leave out these round parentheses and that is when it is uh, taking one parameter exactly so let's just give it a double a like this and go back to our main method in here no oh, no <laughs> in here fix this double a and we'll say a plus nine and in here i'm going to say a and here i'm going to say a plus nine but i can actually leave these out and it's still going to be fine but i can only do it when i'm only using a single variable and again i can also have called this x or anything else would have been fine it just knows this is the first input parameter it's the only one it knows where to put it if i would really want it i could specify the type but then i would have to surround it with round parentheses again and also, if it's taking two input parameters, I'll have to specify the type for both. If I specify one, I'll have to specify both or specify none. So these are the main things I want you to know about lambda expressions. And I realize that they can be really vague if you come across them the first time. So please know, Java knows what you want to do because you're using a functional interface, which is only one abstract method. So it knows that when you use the name of the functional interface here, that then in here, you must do something that is matching the calc method. So these go there and whatever is the body goes here. A few more things. If you um, have um, a return statement, you can do that when it's not returning anything. Um, but you cannot do that without the um, curly brackets. So you'd have to go like this. And please mind this semicolon here, it's a mean one. It's easy to forget, but you need it. As soon as you start using the curly brackets, you'll just need to use semicolons like you're used to. So to make it clear, this is actually the same as this. And then the semicolon makes a whole lot of more sense all of a sudden. And this way you can actually also write multi-line lambda. So you could do something like, uh, like this. I don't know, this doesn't really make sense, but just to show you can do multi-line with one lambda. Um, that's it for lambdas uh, for now. Play around with this, get a good feeling of it. And I know it can be difficult, just to trick, read this arrow as becomes. It really helps to make sense of it in your head. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions left.